everybody. This is Stephanie Rittermott, and I am the president of Courageous Living, and I have a special, special guest with me today, um, Sandra Lee, who is the founder and president of Emerge Victorious. She's also a very renowned um, divorce uh, life coach, a collaborative uh, divorce coach, and also a divorce mediator. She has two offices in North Carolina. I think that's still the case because that's yeah. your website. Sandra and I go way back about 10 years when I went through um, training through her on divorce life coaching. And so she has had a huge handprint on my life. And so I'm just so blessed to have her join us. And we're going to actually do um, a three part series. This first part, we're going to talk about the emotional aspect of a divorce, kind of what you can expect or what you might be going through. Then we're going to talk about some of the practical things mind when you're going through a divorce and then also one of the I think the key things that we don't hear much about is the rebuilding of your life mm -hmm. our third series of how to you know really you've come out of this it's for some it's just a very stressful time and then you now get to you know have a new chapter and you get to write that new chapter and so that's gonna be part of our series so Sandra can you just very briefly just kind of introduce yourself to our audience a little bit about you and and how did you get to this place I know we kind of had similar journeys of going through divorce but how did you you know go through that and now here you are helping other people on it so my journey I've been uh, a divorce coach divorce mediator and they're doing the trainings for over 21 years now Again, that's not what I started out. That was at my career path and divorce um, interrupted, knocked at my door, not once, but twice. So I have experienced divorce with two children and then a pretty quick remarriage because I thought I had found the most wonderful man, totally opposite than the first, jumped into that marriage and had another child. And then I did blended family which is a really, really hard thing to do as well. And, and maybe and, that's a good lead into the emotional part of when you are going down this path of divorce, if we can touch on that. But I do want to ask you one question is because of all your experience, have you found that the beginning stages of the emotional journey, if a person is being served the divorce versus a person who is serving Find that those two people kind of start that journey a little bit different. They might catch up on uh, emotionally stable, but it starts out a little rough or not rough. Mm -hmm. So Stephanie, I think also one of the things you're referring to is almost the lever, the levy. Is that yes. right? Yeah. No. Okay. So there's always one person that is usually further down the process mm -hmm. and the emotional process. And the person that's asking for the divorce or the levy is often further emotionally down that road. That doesn't mean that that person leaving or requesting the divorce, it's their fault or they didn't want a marriage. It is that they have typically started grieving the end of the marriage longer. Today, we know that about 75 to 80% of all divorces are actually sought by the woman. Mm -hmm. Not because of fault, not because, but she begins to start grieving and dying to the marriage two, three years before. And she will say, I want to go to counseling. This isn't working. And she's often met with the husband saying, we don't need that, or I'm not going to a counselor. Nobody's going to tell me what to do, or we can figure this out. And he puts it into his compartment and goes on. And she keeps processing it and grieving and dying. And usually when she can figure out one, how she can, might can make it financially or two, the kids will be okay. Three, how she can live with the guilt that often us women love to pack on, then she will say, I'm ready for a divorce. And when she tells him, he'll often go, I didn't know things were that bad. Let's go to counseling. What do we need to do? And he's really ready usually to try a lot of things. But see, she's already grieved and gone. And very seldom does that ever come back to a, a healed marriage. That doesn't make husband and wife right or wrong. It's a lot about how we process 
And I really think it's important for people to talk about because we need to start really saying the house is on fire two and three years ago. The house is on fire. We've got to get help. Um, but I think that happens. And the person that is leaving is still in just as much pain. Mm -hmm. Just they processed a few things. The number one thing that we all have when we go through a change is, is fear. And whether you're the levy or the one leaving, uh, you have a lot of fears because of the fear of unknown mm -hmm. and that anger that surface that we all, we all usually have or often have. And I always say anger. There's, there's three other words I use when I see anger and it is the fear and frustration and um, just the, the unknown and, and, um, but would you like to share a little bit more about the emotional part of this now? Your life's interrupted. The voice is here. What can we expect? So one thing I'd say is buckle your seatbelt, and you're about to earn your PhD. That's so true. And your PhD will be in pain, hurt, and disappointment. And you're going to have to go through that. So as we talk about that roller coaster and we're familiar with the grieving stages, it takes a while to get to acceptance, but something I really want to make sure we say is to whoever's listening, don't compare your process of grieving to anyone else's. Mm, good point. Because I don't know how long it's going to take and you don't need to rush it. You need to take it, your process as it comes as long as you're doing it in a healthy way, which we'll talk a little bit about in a second. And it's not a, it's not a ward that you get through if you get through at the end and you've gotten through grieving faster or, but don't stuff it. Don't stuff it because it'll come back. And um, it just goes in hiding and it comes out in a lot of other ways. There will be a day that will come and you'll wake up and you'll think, or you'll be walking and you'll think. You'll see a flower and you'll think, I'm okay. I'm ready for this next chapter. I'm going to be all right. My kids are going to be okay. We've had some really tough roads, tough conversations, but we're okay. And there's a day that comes, and I always, I always think that I want women to, women or men, to almost memorialize it and, you know, get a charm that's engraved, a necklace or something, because that's a really special day. But I don't want you to think that you're less than if it takes longer or how you get there. Just don't get into that comparison. But early, early in divorce, stage one, uh, you're going to be vomiting emotions all over the place. And I'll tell a quick story. I, I remember walking into, I was walking into Walmart, and it was, it was the holiday time. And I was going to go pick up some food as well. And I was at the meat department. And I just started crying, mm -hmm. hysterically crying, completely broke down. No connection to any certain day. Nothing really in particular. And I just had to leave. I couldn't finish. And I didn't beat myself up for that. Mm -hmm. I am such a believer in having a good divorce coach because as I call them, they're their, your thinking partner. And so mm -hmm. when you aren't thinking at your best or you're just um, don't know what you're facing or how to get through it, that is because a divorce coach is trained, equipped, has the skills to recognize the emotions that you're going through and where you're at, but also understands the map, what the journey you're on and how to pull you forward. And I just find that such a valuable uh, person and professional to have in your life when you're going through the divorce, if you can. Um, I think you make a much wiser, uh, divorcee and understand what you've done and make better decisions in all parts of your life because they really looked at it with you.
you know, for us women, we take on a lot of guilt and needs to fix things and care what others think. And I think that divorce often triggers us all the way back to middle school mm. when everybody talked about everybody behind their back. And instead of your friend coming and telling you something, she calls and tells your four other good friends. And now they've all formed a group and you've been left out. And I think that divorce sometimes feels that way, that you're no longer in the group. And we'll find friends that uh, really quit calling us quit showing up in our life. And it's as if we have that scarlet D on our forehead or we have a disease and they don't know what to do with us, uh, but it hurts. It makes us, you know, even feel lonelier and, and we have even more loss. And then there is the church and we'll hear, you know, God hates divorce. And so when you walk into your church and you're standing there and no matter where you sit in a church, when you're going through divorce, you will end up behind the person where the husband's scratching the wife's back <laughs> or hugging. I don't know what happens and you need to cry, but you just, I, I always found the most, the couple that I thought was so in love always. But um, the church is hard because you feel like everyone's looking at me, I'm divorced. So of course, I'm damaged goods mm -hmm. and, and some react that way. Um, we're not great at loving people through divorce. We're not great at being, a, always being the best of friends through divorce and we judge and we, and we, we do judge. And, and so if there's a whole nother layer of loss that comes on top of your own divorce, and that can be family, family turning on you, family having an opinion about what you should or shouldn't do, uh, friends have an opinion you should and shouldn't do, the church has an opinion, should, shouldn't do, people at work. And all these people are telling you things where you'll get to the point where you're like, I, I, I just need to get, I gotta go away, I need to be alone. Because you no longer even know who you can trust. And divorce will usher that in as well. So we go through divorce and we really don't know who we can trust because we thought we could trust each other. We thought we could trust marriage. And so we doubt ourselves and we doubt other people. And then in that second wave, we start thinking, who can I trust on this side? Because my friends that I thought were friends or my constants that I thought would be there, maybe aren't they gonna be there. But the hope here is this is a really good time to start figuring out who and what is toxic in your life and clean emotional house. Yes. And it's, it's not an easy path, but there, there is hope at the end and there is a life still waiting on you. Don't sit back and let life go on without you. Participate in your life show up, you just cast off that shame and guilt. My friend, that's not yours to own. Learn what you need to learn from your divorce, from your mistakes, and what's your, not yours to own, get rid of it. That's really good. You know, um, do you know who Mel Robbins is? I'm sorry? Do you know who Mel Robbins is? Uh -huh. So she's been doing with now with her show's been canceled. So she's doing these noon sessions with all the, the pandemic going on and helping people. So I was going through, they're talking about how the marriages now are being challenged during this time. Mm -hmm. She said something to this one lady who was being challenged with, with the relationship and also other things happening. But she said um, to help her process it and separate things out. She says, um, you did not fail. Your marriage failed. Mm -hmm. and I thought that was so powerful. Because, I, absolutely. You know, I mean, I, there's oh, we all do wrong. We all make mistakes, and maybe someone did you wrong. But to help a person, I think get to that next step is really separate and say, okay, the marriage failed. Mm -hmm. it does mm -hmm. not mean I failed or I'm taking all this with me. Yeah, just as important in that is Stephanie is I'm not my marriage. I'm not my job. I'm not my house. I'm not my kid. 
I'm, I am a soul. I'm a living present spirit. So I'm, and I got married. And if the marriage fails, the marriage failed. And that's, that's true when we struggle in our parenting or we lose a job. Our identity is in there. And I do think when we can start to separate and still see I'm, I'm lovable, I'm valuable, those things failed. Oh, thank you. To all of you watching, thank you for just being my sister, my brother on this journey. And I may be further down the road, but boy, do I recognize your footsteps. Mm -hmm. And um, march on, march on, my friend. Amen.